Today we're going to be talking about properties, instances, and comments. But if you're new to the series, be sure to check out the first video so you're not confused and you can learn about the Roblox scripting environment and variables. While it may be easy to alter properties with a properties window, doing so with a script isn't always as straightforward. For example, if you want to change the brick color of a part from the default medium stone gray to really red, you can't just set it equal to really red. You need to create a new brick color that is really red. When it comes to the size and position of parts, you need to create a new vector 3. These are both examples of instances. Ideally, you should fully understand instances and classes before you move on from this video. However, fully understanding them does require a decent level of effort, and I know not everyone wants to fully understand it. Some people just want to be able to get it done, so let's just start with an example. What we are going to do is instantiate a part, change the part's size, and change the part's color, all within a script. So open Roblox Studio, then go to View and open Explore, Properties, and Output. Now let's go to the Explorer and insert a script into the workspace, and then delete the default script. To instantiate a part, we need to type local brick equals instance.new, and then part. So this instance.new can be used to create many different objects. I'll talk more about that later. So this is actually a object right here, and then this is a new function on it. But again, I'll talk more about that later on after we get over this quick example. So in addition to just making the part, uh, let's change the size. So we'll do brick.size equals vector3.new. And then here's where we'll put three numbers. As you can see, it says number x, y, and z. So we'll just type 5, 10, and 20. And this is going to be the length, the width, and then the height. Let's also change the brick color. So we'll type brick dot brick color equals brick color dot new. And then we'll do really red. Now this will create a part, but the parts parent will be equal to nil. So as I said in the last video, nil is equal to nothing. Basically it represents nothing or the absence of a value. So in order to actually see the part, we need to set the bricks parent to the workspace. So we brick that parent equals workspace and now we'll be able to actually see the part and you can actually set this when you instantiate the part so you could um didn't mean to delete that actually so you could come up here and when you instantiate it you could do part and then comma workspace so this second parameter right here as you can see up here it says a uh, string val so that's a string which would be what we want to create and then also instance parent so workspace would be the parent so you could do this, but it's not recommended that you do this actually. The Roblox staff actually says not to do it because it's less efficient. And you actually wanna say the parent, after you do any alterations, such as like for the size and brick color, you wanna set the parent last. It's a little bit more efficient. You wouldn't notice it on just one part, but if you're gonna be instantiating a lot of parts, that's when you would start to notice it. And as I said, instance.new can be used to create other objects. So let's go ahead and actually create a fire just for the example. So we'll do local fire equals instance.new and then fire in quotations. Now let's actually make this fire a little bit bigger because I got a feeling we won't be able to see it with the size of our part. So we'll just do fire.size equals 20. And the size of a fire is just a number. It's not a vector three. Um, if you read the documentation, you could see that. Uh, it also just makes a little bit more sense because there's there's not an X, Y, and Z coordinate to a fire. It's just uh, the same size all around. So then we'll set the parent of the fire because it also needs a parent because right now it's nil. So do fire.parent equals, and then we'll just set it equal to the brick. And now let's go ahead and, go ahead and uh, click run. And as you can see, our part has been created and it is five long and 10 wide and then 10, 20 tall and then our fire is inside of it. Now at this point you could run off and say that you know how to create instances. You can alter pretty much any property you want because you know how to create vector threes and brick colors. And by the way, creating color threes and vector twos and UDIM twos is pretty much the same thing. So you know how to create those two with just what you've seen in this tutorial so far. But I think it's important to stick around and learn a little bit more. I'm going to teach you how to use comments, which is really easy, so don't worry about that. And I'm also going to talk more about what an instance is and how it relates to classes. So if you want to know the really juicy details, you're in for a treat. Also, don't forget to like the video, 
if it's helped you out so far, and subscribe if you want me to teach you something in the future. I'll talk about instances first since we're on the topic and then comments last. So what is an instance? What I'm about to say may become a bit confusing, but stick with me. This gets into some programming concepts that are more intermediate to advanced, specifically object-oriented programming. And I've taken full semester courses on object-oriented programming, so I won't explain all of it in this short video. And frankly, as a beginner, these concepts are more difficult to grasp, but I'll do my best to simplify it so you at least know how to get by until you can fully understand it. In general, an instance is a specific occurrence of any class, and a class is a blueprint for creating objects or instances. Instance and object can be used interchangeably. So a class could be a blueprint for creating cars, but it isn't an actual car. The class is more of an idea or concept, while the instance or the object is the actual occurrence of the class. Using this blueprint to create an actual car is called instantiation. So once you instantiate the car class, that's when you have a car instance or object. In Roblox, an instance is also the base class for all classes in the Roblox class hierarchy. This is a bit confusing because the class name is instance, and I just said that instances are specific occurrences of classes. That still stands true, but Roblox just named the base class instance because it is used in all instances. Basically, an instance is the general term for all classes in Roblox. It's just like animal is the general term for mice, dogs, birds, and fish. Mice, dogs, birds, and fish are all animals. In the same way, parts, fire, scripts, and the workspace are all types of instances. You can actually see the tree of all classes on the Roblox API. There is a lot more going on that I'll cover in a future video, but at the minimum, I just wanted to expose you to the class hierarchy in Roblox. Now that you know it exists, you may eventually start to pick up on things and understand it better. But if you do have questions, be sure to leave them down below and I'll get back to you. With all of that in mind, let's take a look at what we scripted before. At the top, we're creating this new part and the instance word in blue is a reference to the instance base class and for, that's for all classes in Roblox. So there's a function within this class called new, uh, which takes a string and then the function will return a new instance or object based on what this string right here was. So in this case, since the string is part, the function created a new part. And I said that it returned a reference to this part. And what that means is that once we type this all out, the code on the right here is actually a reference to that new part. So since we're setting a variable right here equal to this right here, we now have a reference to our new part. The vector three and the brick color follow the same pattern. The vector three dot new function takes three numbers as the parameters right here, and then it returns a new vector three constructed with those parameters. Now these new functions are all known as constructors because they are used to construct a new object of the respective class. And you can see how to use these constructors in the Roblox API. For example, here's the vector three constructor on the Roblox API, and it just says it constructs a new vector three using the X, Y, and Z components. You also see that it says number X equals zero, Y equals zero, and Z equals zero. And what that means is that there are default values when the constructor is used. So you can actually just type vector three dot new, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, and then the default values are used. Finally, let's cover comments. So commenting your code is an important practice in scripting. And in Lua, you can make comments with two dashes, and this is just a single line comment, and nothing in this line will be executed now. So now I can say, um, this fire is for my part. So basically you just use comments to give some additional information about your code so that it's easier to come back and read it and understand what's going on. So, oh yeah, this fire, yeah, I'm gonna put this in my part, my brick that I'm making. Typically it's used for a little bit more complicated things. Obviously it's pretty easy to read this code and figure out what's going on. Um, but, and also if you're sharing code with someone else and then they can read it and figure out what your code is doing. Um, and then, like I said, this is just a single line comment. If you want to do a multi-line comment, then you can do dash, dash, bracket, bracket, and then everything in between this will not be executed. So here it's a one, you know, two, multi-line comment. This can also be useful if you're trying to debug and maybe you want to comment something out so you can try something else. So that's one other really big use of it. As always, thanks for watching. If you learned anything from this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe for more in the future, 
And then also, if you have any questions, leave them below and I'll be sure to get back to you. And then also, if you have any suggestions, leave those below too. And I'll try to make them as soon as possible.